Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Parker Imerl, and this is The Conversation Station. Today we have a rad guest. We are joined by the one and only Sean Briscoe. Sean is a successful entrepreneur, financial expert, author, and co-trustee of the Kind Foundation. With over 18 years of experience in the financial industry, he has helped numerous business owners, entrepreneurs, and investors grow their wealth and give back to their communities in meaningful ways. Sean is also passionate about the Kind Foundation, a private family foundation that he started with his wife, Ellen, to help children heal from, their li- from life's hurts. Sean has impacted over 100 kids' lives through foster services. He is founder of the Strategic Wealth Network, which offers unique systems for businesses, for business owners, entrepreneurs, and investors to save money on their taxes and make bigger contributions to their communities. The, his book, The Truth About Taxes, shares the secret tax strategy that the ultra elite use to save money on their taxes, which the rest of the world does not know about and isn't leveraging. Sean is a dedicated husband and father who values making a difference in the world. Welcome on, Sean. Thanks, man. That was quite an introduction. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you on, man. This is exciting. We had him on 10 episodes ago, and the podcast has come a long way since, and now we get to have have him on again, and I'm excited to to see what we cover this episode that we didn't dive into last time. We dove into like the lizard brain and all that stuff last time, and that was awesome. Yeah, we kind of went off on a tangent, didn't we? Oh yeah, we 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 went down a down down the down a rabbit hole, and it was it was awesome. So <laughs> awesome. So what, what do you have, want to talk about today? I don't know. What have you been working on recently that's got you excited? <laughs> Man, lots of stuff. Um, let's see. Kind Foundation has uh, grown and expanded. Yeah, we have. Uh, you know, our original mission and purpose was real simple. We were. Uh, focused on foster care and adoption in that whole world and helping kids in trauma that have been through trauma and abuse and neglect to kind of heal from that. And um, about two years ago, I met uh, Tim Kennedy and uh, just randomly, you know, took a course that he was offering through Sheepdog Response, his company, and got to meet him and uh, heard about his school, Apogee School, and uh, started talking with him about the mission and purpose of Apogee and how they were helping kids to go on a hero's journey and really to, to create a, a whole uh, lifestyle of education instead of just a system of schooling like traditional schools give you. And I thought, man, if we can merge the two concepts, helping kids in foster care that have been through trauma and abuse where school's not a fit for them anymore, and if I could help him with this school system and help build it out, uh, that would be a, in my mind, that would be a huge win, right? Well, fast forward two years, um, school's been built. I, uh, I was able to help him with the scholarship fund for military and first responder kids who've been through trauma themselves and where school's just not a fit, traditional schooling's not a fit, and they need more of an educational setting and in a real world setting and connection with a, with a community, which is, you know, part of the healing process. Connection is, is a huge healing yeah. um, piece in the foster care community with these kiddos too. And so uh, I was all in, I sponsored four kids in the first year with scholarships. I set up a scholarship fund for those military and first responder kids. And uh, we've grown that scholarship fund. We've given away almost $70,000 to these kiddos so far uh, just through gifts, awesome. grants, and donations, and um, helping helping that whole mission. The school's growing. They're adding another facility very soon. They're looking for a property right now and moving forward with a, a junior high and a high school level, that kind of age group level. Um, and it's becoming a whole, uh, a whole unique universe, if you will, this whole Apogee movement. And it's moved online. You're part of the Apogee Strong group in that community, which is unique. Yeah. I think it's a, a great, a great tribe that you've built. Uh, they rolled out a dad's group or a men's group. Yeah, it's the exclusive dad's for husbands and fathers. And, you know, some of them are business owners, entrepreneurs. Some of them are what I call intrapreneurs, where they operate inside of a organization um, and then there are entrepreneurs that operate on their own outside. They build their own companies, 
but the paths can be very similar in the fact that where we have to, as human beings, expand and grow and do more and be more and suck less, right? Yeah. That's the mission. And so what Tim and, and Matt Boudreau have rolled out with the Apogee Men's Program is just this entire process of expansion and growth that it's, it's really blowing up. It's really cool to see. So I'm involved in that. I'm helping them with that as well. Um, they're adding a women's group, um, you know, for the ladies. It's going to be the same kind of hero's journey, if you will, but just different conversations, right? Yeah. Different concepts, different topics of conversation. Um, you know, men, husbands and fathers, uh, the stresses and pressures that we're under with families They're is, different. is unique and in, yeah. it's different from what women are going through and the mothers are going through. Right. And so they require their own tribe where they can feel safe and comfortable communicating and doing that as well. So it's, I'm excited to see this thing just expanding and growing. Yeah, and I'm excited up. to see what comes from that as well. And I yeah. think it's when you were talk, talk, touching on the education, I think that's so important because traditional education definitely isn't for any everyone. I don't. I think most people would be better off in a different form of education. And for me, I'm lucky enough to be homeschooled, but a lot of people don't get that opportunity. They don't have the resources, the access to doing that. And so being able to help kids and help families um, create the best educational experience is so freaking rad, man. It's so yeah. cool. Well, and we're coming, we're having this realization. I think, you know, there's a, there's a really, really great book out there by a guy named Peter Diamantis. It's called Abundance. And I don't know if you've read it, but if you haven't, get it. It's a great book. What he talks about is this exponential yield curve, this time that we're in right now as a world where everything's happening faster and faster and faster, you know, yeah. like bad things happen fast, but good things are happening fast as well. You see uh, what Elon Musk has been able to accomplish in just the last decade, right? It's yeah. just unbelievable stuff that's happening. So we're in this exponential yield curve. And I think that people are waking up and realizing that traditional schooling is just linear. You know, you start, Absolutely. you come in as a freshman or you come in as a kindergartner, whatever level you start at. And everybody goes through this linear progression and exits and gets spit out the other end. Yeah. I don't, right? I, yeah. It's, it's frankly idiotic because humans aren't a linear <laughs> system. Last time I checked your path, isn't going to be the same as mine. Last time I checked the same <laughs> thing that's going to resonate with me. Ain't, ain't always going to resonate with Sean. I don't, I don't, un, I mean, I always know that there's, there's always a greater reason behind it, but at the surface. So I, what it's, is that reason, Parker? What do you think that is? Uh, like what's I, holding them back from just this mindset, this shift in mindset? Why do people believe that they've got to put their kid into this factory and have them go through the process and get spit out the other end? You tell me, Sean, maybe it's got to do with the fact for the past 100 years, it's been the same system. And what does the s system promote? The system's biggest promotion is the system. So if I send my kids to this school and I'm constantly being told the best thing for my kids is to send them here, but, but they, don't, they, they don't stop to take, they don't take a, the step back to look at their educational journey and be like, hey, Maybe that didn't serve Did me the best. Did it work? work? <laughs> I think that that's something that's so important is getting people yeah. to take that step back and take a look at the at their world and the world and see if if possibly there was something better. And I also but I also think they don't even explore that and I feel like hey, you could have had the best educational journey and you could feel it's best for your kids. But at least take the step back and take a look because there So why don't people explore that, do you think? What's the What's stopping them from even looking at it or acknowledging it? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I think I feel like that's a consistent theme across a lot of different things, not just school, but absolutely. I have no idea, man. It feels, it feels like there's, I feel like it's certainly a bit of cultural. I just think that it's this compounding a hundred years, generation after generation of it being pounded into their head that this is the only and the best system. And then also, some of the alternative options are worse than the system right now. Like, I started this school <laughs> sure. year in a um, homeschool charter because last year I did full homeschool, and then I was like, okay, maybe I'll try a charter. It was worse than the regular system because I still had to do the same. No, here's the thing. Homeschool. If you're going to do homeschool, that's great. 
But pick your own curriculum. Do not do the one that you, through the homeschool charter, I got thrown into the same things that I was doing in regular school. So the public same, education, the yeah. same, it, it's just public education, that but I'm sitting in my room. A, lot of, a trap that people fall into. Yeah, it, it was literally just the regular public, public education system. But instead of just being online. around friends, I'm sitting in my room alone. And so I'm yeah. like, okay, there's, there's better options. So I, so I was like, uh, nope, I'm done with that. I'm, I'm, I'm done, done, done. And then I just started doing things more of a, taking a more project-based approach, taking things from mm -hmm. the perspective of, hey, if I want to, if I want to go into the digital marketing space, I'm going to go do an internship with someone in the digital marketing space. I'm going to learn from the people doing the thing instead of learning from the professor who did so good in school that he never left. Yeah. You know, at Apogee School, at Tim's school, they, um, they had a lock picking day where they, oh, they had fun. just a lock picking expert come in and teach the kids how to pick locks. It was the coolest I, thing. What the heck? I you can't know. hear you right now. I don't know what just happened. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're back now. So we had some technical difficulties. difficulties. Thought that my, uh, my audio interface was dying on me. I forgot to plug in my headphones properly. So the uh, cable just fell out. That was the problem. And I'm right? supposed to, I'm supposed to be the techie guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank, thank thank you for uh for for helping me through that uh that was that was interesting my, my headphone cable that should be the first <laughs> thing you check so you know we're gonna broadcast this inside the apogee strong group oh oh i am i'm sending the, i'm sending the the <laughs> because we have some behind the scenes footage i won't come uh i won't put it in the episode but um it'll be out as a separate video on the youtube channel if you guys want to check out parker and sean trying to diagnose his <laughs> headphones um can you hear me now can you hear me now oh i can yeah can you and the, the funny thing is my camera so even if this was glitching out my camera was recording the whole time that because the camera you're saying is not what it'll go out on the episode the main camera so so it's all there oh yeah. i'm oh i'm gonna get ridiculed by by uh kaleo terribly where were we <laughs> i think we were diving into um alternate education and how i was yeah. i had been dealing with the the, the, the system was the same as what I had been dealing with. Um, it, it's, it was the same. And so I think the issue is that the, the main, main, main um, homeschool options are the same thing as the, educa the main education it's online system. It's online education at home is what it is. It, that's it what, is. That's what a lot of people think home education is. Yeah, and it's basically what I dealt with in, during COVID, but 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 yeah. less fun and less enjoyable. So it gets to the point where I, I think the main issue with why people don't don't look this way, and it's because the obvious options are completely terrible, which usually is the case with most things. But if you're trying to send find a school situation for your kid, you're going with the obvious option. Most parents are, even though I would argue that. You should never, especially when it comes to your kids, why are you going with the ob obvious option? They are the most important, they are the, they are the Im most important thing you will, the most important thing you will ever do is educate your children. So why would you, why would you cheap out mentally? Maybe you're not, maybe you're sending them to an expensive private school, but you still cheaped out mentally if it was the first dive uh, in. Think about it. Even the, even the expensive private schools, which I went to an expensive private high school, right? Um, it's traditional schooling. It's yeah, I so all the kids doing the same thing, going through the same process, getting spit out the other end. You know. So yeah, that is and the major graded issue. Accordingly, which yeah doesn't those grades are not even valid. You know. Yeah, great grades are. Yeah, I mean, I I was in I was in a, a not normal school. I was in Waldorf, yeah. and yeah. the Waldorf system is great for kids going up to fourth grade. That that's where I'd cut it off. I I was there till seventh it's grade for young kids. Yeah, but but no, it's it's great for it's great because but the the issue is that it's the it's the linear path, which I think the project based act in sort of model is so much better because it's a kid by kid basis a case by case yeah. basis which i think that so much in our 
So much of our world would be so much better if it was a case by case basis. And if you were to tell the world, how do you know when you've mastered a subject, what would you say? How would you respond to that? You, you don't. You, there's no... you. Or when, do you, when does the world know that you've learned something? When does the world know that you've, su- that you've learned something? In your model versus traditional school. The traditional school, you get a grade, right? How do you yeah. guys pull it off? Well, I think, I think in, my, in my eyes, when the, the world knows you when, you, you when you've learned something is when you can start efficiently applying it to your life. And maybe not exactly. even efficiently, just apply it to your just life. Just applying it. Just, and so... so I... Yeah. I I was listening to this. So we were, we were all the parents were on this webinar when, uh, Apogee school first started. And, uh, Alexa, Alexis Dries was the uh, director at the time. And she was, uh, you know, talking to the parents. One of the parents said, well, how do you know if you're not grading these kids, how do you know when they know this stuff? And she called one of the kids over to her and she said, Hey, how do we know when you guys are doing or when you guys have mastered something or learned a subject? And the kid goes, because we're doing it, duh. And he well, yeah, away. obviously. If you're, yeah, I mean, like, okay, I, let's say I get simple. a good grade in my history class, but I never use it. In three years, I won't know a thing. Yeah. So what's the point of me learning history if I'm not applying it? If it's something I'm going to apply, let's learn it, let's master it. But if it's just something? Yeah. If it's just a and thing I'm how, doing? Show that you've mastered it through practical application. You know? Yeah. Exactly. That's the key. I, I think there, there's, there's, the, there, there's the phrase, education through application. You educate by doing because in life, once you're out of the school system where you get grades, that's all you do is you apply stuff. It's apply this here, apply that there. So what is the point of an education system if it doesn't teach you to effectively apply and learn from your mistakes? Yep. Or to collaborate, to work with others. You know, my daughter, nine years old, she comes home and she's like, you know, talking about a project that she was doing at her school. And she's like, so I got my three friends involved and we, you know, one of them was doing this, one of them was doing this and one of them was doing that. And we all knocked it out in the afternoon and, you know, they got their badge or whatever. I was just like, wow, that's efficient use of, you know the team. <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah, I mean, I'm not even that a bunch that of people involved. W- when you can be efficient, I think that that's the thing. When you truly master a subject or anything in life, it's when you can efficiently apply it and efficiently get things done in that area because time is money, but time is more valuable than money. There is an incredibly finite amount of time. Time is the most valuable resource known to man. So, when you can be efficient, Consistent efficiency is the most valuable skill anyone can learn. Yep. It's not even close. man is the one that has all the time in the world. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, if, like, podcasting, I mean, hey, now I'm, a, I'm able to record, record, edit, and release an episode within 24 hours if I need to. That's efficiency. It used to take me a week of stressed out work, but now I have a system. I record, I transfer five. It's it's a step by step, and that's a, that's a thing I talk about with one of my mentors a lot. Systems are the are again so important because if you have a repeatable system for your business, for example, like for generating leads for a for a cleaning business, if you have a system that allows you to consistently generate and um and convert leads and that's repeatable that means that makes your business instantly scalable because you can repeat the system and it makes your business more efficient because as opposed to just going after it and having no idea what 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 you're doing when if you have a list you're gonna be like oh i just got to do this today this is tiny rather than looking at the big goal and being like how the hell am i gonna do that yeah we did a little experiment at the kids squirrel. They, they did a fundraiser and one of the studios, they, um, did flyers. So they all made a bunch of flyers and they put them up around town. Another studio did, um, just, uh, leaflets where they handed people stuff, you know, instead of it being a broadcast, they were individually handing them to people as they walked by in a, in an area. Yeah. And the last girl just created a landing page. 
and with the ability to pay online, to, to donate online, right? The first two groups didn't raise a dime. The last girl raised $400. Yeah. You know, making it easy for people, a more efficient way yeah. for people to donate. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's so simple. If you're serving someone, you got to serve them in, in the way that is easiest for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I mean, if I want to buy, she had a system, you know. Yeah, look at Amazon. Why is Amazon so big? Because they replaced the fact that you have to go to the store. They they made it more efficient, easier, and better. So, if if you are analyzing any business, the reason they make money is because their service offers an efficient method to improve someone's life. It's that simple. Creates value. Exactly. Dollars for value. Exactly. I mean, it's, I just, I don't think, I don't think that that's like, this all ties back to education. They don't, they don't teach you that. They don't teach you anything about finance. Finance is freaking important. Yeah. If you're a business owner or an entrepreneur, you got to know your numbers. You got to know what's going on. You got to know your income, your cost of goods, your expenses, your how much you're paying in taxes, insurance, all that stuff. Your employee expenses. Yeah. You know those numbers. If you, you don't, you're not running your business. Absolutely, you know? man. I mean, and, and I almost think that uh, it's interesting because well, it's it gets really interesting when you start questioning why don't they teach that. It's because the the the, the there is no truly logical explanation to the why not so i'm gonna run something by you have you considered the possibility that something else is going on oh absolutely they don't want you to know that yes on purpose yeah i mean i mean they they, they created this school system with a certain agenda to focus people on graduating with a certain license or the ability to go to work for a company. They give you a piece of paper that's yeah. valueless. Um, but well, when, when you go to work for a corporation and you're a W-2 employee and you're getting a paycheck, taxes are taken out up front, right? And you don't think about it. Yeah. I mean, if you had to write a check for your taxes every time you got paid, taxes would not be as high as they are. Yeah. We would have had a revolt long, long ago, you know? Yeah, and I mean, I I mean, you know, Matt, that's he was in the game of school for so long. And so he talks about that. He's like, there's something greater here. I mean, people wonder why I set up my schools the way they did so they couldn't be affected when COVID came around. They're like, how did you know? He's like, well, this has been the plan all along. COVID, COVID was not, not like, just heck, accelerated the heck, plan. Yeah, may, maybe COVID was just came along, but the plan to be able to plan. control everything has always been there so when you can set up your education system in a way that the main system can't control it it's genius it same with growing your own food and you know yeah and it's and those kind of things apply to business you want your business to be the least effective you want it to be able to be affected as little as possible by the government. So because you never know what the government's going to do. Yeah, or by anything external, you know. Yeah. It'd be great if you could future proof your whole business. Yeah. Um and I think that that's something that can be incredibly difficult and near impossible these days to fully future proof your business because businesses rely on people and so you have to you'd have to future proof the world. But yeah. but but it's always something you've got to be thinking about. You've got to be thinking future forward. And this is a quote that um, that a mentor of mine came up with, and I, I stole from him. And it's uh, it's well, we were just in the car driving somewhere, and he's like, "People are people glorify the past because they're scared of the future. And like if that. if people stop glorifying the past and they focus on the future, w- the world it would just be." inherently better because you would have more focus on moving forward rather than the oppression of the past look at things like 
like BLM, for example, not, 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 not like, not that I'm talking about that specifically, but it's an example. A big focus on that is the past. What happened in the past? We want, we want, we want help for what happened in the past, but now isn't the past. It's, 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 it's far later. So let's focus on the future. Let's not focus on what went wrong in the past. Let's just focus on, let's just say, Hey, we're just going to do this too. Better, well, better the world the for the past, future, right? You, you can't, can't change can't. the past. Yeah, you can't fix it. You, there's no solution to the past. Yeah, yeah. It's, the only solution is to move forward in a better way. The only level up and do better. The only, the only way to better the past is to learn from it to create a brighter future. It's that simple. Also, so when you talk, you go like this. I, I after I did that interview with you, like. All, but uh, almost a year ago at this point, I started doing that in like all these conversations of like, oh my God, I'm Man, Sean. I'm Sean. I've become Sean. I've got, I, I, I was, I'm like, like doing this with, with my fingers. And I'm like, oh wh- yeah. I just noticed immediately that that was just when I was talking with my hands, I, I just go like this from now. And it's, it, it's hilarious. It's like when you do that, it's more important. It's so what much more important. More you look at this <laughs> instead of looking at this. It's this. This right here. I, I love the fact that there's people listening on on iTunes who are like, uh, <laughs> watch it on Spotify or on YouTube. We got video up episodes up there, and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow the podcast. Um, I don't know why I'm doing promo right now. You're listening to the podcast. I don't know yeah, if I need to do good. promo, but um, and check 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 both of us out on Instagram. I believe you are what at Sean Briscombe. Mm-hmm. And I'm at Parker Emerald. Um, but yeah, dude, it's it was so funny. I just kind of started doing it. And then it's just like, I'm like, I, I, I noticed after like a month that I was doing that. And I'm like, oh my God, I got that from Sean. I got that from editing the podcast and watching Sean go here, 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 lizard brain, this, that. Yeah. Man, so... So besides um, education and everything going on with the Apogee, Apogee Cedar Park campus, uh, what, what, else, what else are you working on? I know that you've been doing some work with the, the Kind Foundation, and, yeah, but, but what, so, what else is going on in the world of Briscombe? So the, uh, the book's doing well. Yeah. Um, the Truth About Taxes, it's doing well. It's, uh, it's interesting to see this whole game of, of being an author and in the publishing game yeah. in distribution. It's, um, it's, it's a not game. what I thought it yeah. would be, but my book is a little different in the fact that, you know, I had a great conversation with a guy from with the Apogee men's group and today, and he's in Barbados, you know, his family's in Barbados. They went there for a year to check it out and just see if they could live a year away, um, you know, outside of the United States so that they could kind of get a different perspective on life. Right. Yeah. And this is year number three that they've been there and just fantastic conversation. When he read the book, just hearing his takeaways, it was really, uh, it was interesting, you know, just hearing what he had to, what he was seeing from, from his perspective. Yeah. And so, um, been working a lot with clients that are focused on, um, crushing it in their business. They've done exceptionally well financially for themselves, but their focus is more on giving back and making a bigger impact. That's where the and focus so, should always be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, two years ago when I met Tim and started this journey with Apogee, um, we talked about creating this network of giving leaders. You know, we were joking around about it. Like what if we could create all of these nonprofits and connect all connect them all so that we're all helping each other out so that we're supporting each other. You know, like if you're, you have a gala event and you're raising money for your charity, everybody flies out there and you know, you got all your celebrity friends flipping on their Instagram account saying, Hey, hit the landing page, give generously. Here's what this charity's going doing tonight, you know, and we raise money and we, we change the world that way. And he, he kind of laughed and he's like, that would be cool. Well, two years later, we're actually doing it. That's awesome. You know? So it's it's like all of these things that we just were, were thinking were pie in the sky dreams and just huge, huge targets that we set for ourselves. We're actually pulling them off. And it's exciting to see, you know, especially with all the crap that's going on in the world today. Yeah. It's exciting to see a whole group of people that are going another direction, you know. Yeah. It's always exciting to see people changing the world for the better. I got I, I to gotta, I gotta give your... 
I got to give your book a read because it sounds quite interesting. I got to I got to get that get get that uh, get that read. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's you know it's when we were going into the um, the two week flatten the curve lockdown <laughs> thing in COVID. Two two weeks, um, like longest two weeks of my life. I don't life. know if I told this story or not, but uh, I was listening to a podcast called The Bourbon Pursuit. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's these two guys that just all they do is they're bourbon connoisseurs. They travel around and they drink bourbon and talk about it. Sounds like fun. And I was like, hey, that would, you know, I, I don't drink. I'm not a drinker. I was like, that would be pretty cool to be a bourbon connoisseur. So I bought a bunch of bourbon and I started tasting it and stuff. And day number three, my wife walks by me and she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm becoming a bourbon connoisseur. <laughs> and she, she goes, no, you're not. You're just getting drunk. <laughs> And I was like, huh? And she goes, you know, you can either sedate or you can create. It's your choice. And she walked away. And I was like, God dang, what am I going to, that sucks, you know? So I put the bourbon away and I was like, what am I going to do? You know, like, what can I do? Everybody was at home for two weeks and everybody was doing marketing campaigns. So I was like, oh, I'll do a marketing campaign, right? And after third day of like, you know, chewing on a pencil and trying to think of a marketing campaign, I was like, what am I going to do? And a buddy of mine said, why don't you write a book about this stuff that you do with the trusts and the foundations and the, you know, the tax stuff. And I was like, man, how do you make taxes sexy? You know, it's the most boring. Nobody wants to talk about two things. Nobody wants to talk about death and taxes. That's what I do for a living. (laughs) Death and taxes, right? It's estate planning. It's uh, the most boring subject ever. It's like, how do you make that sexy? So I just started writing about my journey uh, discovering this system and what we've been able to do from our family's perspective, uh, giving back and helping other people. And that's exciting. And so it turned into a really cool story. You know, it's not a boring, boring book about taxes, really. Yeah. Even though it's the truth about taxes. That's something I really struggle with with books is I... I have really struggled to read some of these really informational books because they're so full of information, but they're not, yeah. they, they, they're not as engaging at, they're not engaging enough to really keep my attention. Cause I can blast through Harry Potter in a day. Yeah. So but like, why is that? I can't why get through some of these books. Why is it that Harry Potter can keep capture? There I go with my hands again. Harry Potter can capture your attention, but data books are boring and, you get tired of them. I don't know. That's a good question. It's because of the way our brains work. Yeah. All right. So your lizard brain is responsible for taking in all the information first and sorting it out and determining, is this something that I need to deal with right now? Is this something I can put to the side? Is this something that's going to attack me? Do I need to fight it? Right? That fight or flight response. Yeah. And so in Harry Potter, when you go on a hero's journey, what it's doing is it's, it's getting your lizard brain worked up so that you get excited, and then it tapers off and relaxes, and it engages your frontal lobe and, and starts you down this path of, of story, right, where you engage your frontal lobe and you have to think and put yourself in someone else's shoes, perspective shift, And it relaxes your lizard brain. And then you get to another point and they excite your lizard brain again. There's a problem in the book or in the movie, right? And so your brain's going through this wave of excitement and relaxation, excitement and relaxation. And it just pulls you along for, for days. But when you're sitting there listening to data and being lectured to, lecturing is not learning, you know? Telling is not teaching. We learn by doing. Yeah. By experiencing things. So when you're hearing a lecture or reading a, a book that's just data-driven, it's, that's why your brain shuts off. It's trying to just protect yourself. It's shutting, it, shutting all the systems down. Interesting. Did you know that? No, I did not. I mean... So think about that. I, I knew there was things. something there because it was interesting because, I mean, you look at what I never understood is why the, the, the main story elements in any, in any book, movie, show... There are story elements that they tell you to include 
So then, if you're writing something informational, I don't, I, I don't, I, I never understood why, why not write it the same? Why, why not write it with what if the you same told a story about it? Well, yeah, because if someone told me a, a real story, like, like the, the 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 books that are based off of a true story, but maybe have a little bit of like fiction in there, so freaking engaging. Yeah, but. But yeah, so for some of these informational ones. So you were saying something about taking it from the perspective of business? Yeah, so think about using this idea in business, in marketing and messaging, right? Which is 90% of the heavy lifting in business as an entrepreneur or business owner is figuring out how am I going to message this and market this thing that I'm doing, right? Yeah. And how am I going to attract attention, right? Because everybody's attention what is it? We all have an attention deficit at this point. Yeah. But um, if you were to tell, if you were to speak in terms of stories, that would be the greatest skill set you could learn as a business owner or, or an entrepreneur. Yeah. In you know specifically client stories or case studies, but do it in a in an exciting format where you're saying, "Hey, let me tell you a story about Parker." You know, he started off in this podcast and he started making money and. He called me and he was like, hey, how should I set this up? And I said, well, let's get you an LLC. And so we set up an LLC. And then we brought on a business partner and his business partner was a trust. And when he started making all this money in the LLC, his business partner sucked all the money out of the LLC and now he didn't have to pay any taxes, right? And what did he do with the business trust? Well, the business trust started buying all this stuff. So he started owning all these assets in the business trust and it got better. He made more money in that trust and so he donated a bunch of that money to his private foundation where he could give back and make a bigger impact in the world, right? Isn't that a cool story? Yeah, you got me engaged. Now, what I just did was I showed you the whole structure, the whole trust and foundation structure. Yeah, but if you had just told me that, I'd be like, I'd, I'd be asleep. You would have been lost. You'd have been like, well, what does this one do? And why is this over here? And how is this? Exactly. Right? Yeah. So that's... You know, that's a huge, it's almost like a superpower. If you can, if you can master that skill in business, you know, and just when, when someone asks a question like about your product or service, if you can say, yeah, you know, let, let me tell you about this one situation and you go through it in a story format and you answer their question in a story, that's going to stick a lot more with them. Yeah. They're going to remember a lot more. You know, exactly. Yeah. And, and it makes your business a heck of a lot more memorable. And like, for me, I, I want to, I'm, I'm working on, um, eventually in probably the next year or so launching a, a business for doing some business consulting services, um, in a couple of different so why lights. Why are you launching a business for business consulting services? Because I want to help these businesses, um, grow and just, I just want to provide value. That's, that's the point. Provide value. And, 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 but the, but the, so, so, and it's also, um, the entrepreneur I work with, I want to launch, I want to do something similar to what he does and I'm want to help businesses up in my local area. Um, and so currently helping my mom basically do the same thing. It's my mom. So obviously I'm not getting paid for that, but the payment is the fact that now I'll have a story to tell that, yeah, that went tons of stories. to. Yeah. And I'll be like, okay. Well, this business wasn't even a thing when I started working with her, and now it's how, it's you know whatever it is at at the point at that point in time, and so getting to the point where that's 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 the goal right now. But the reason I have you considered like documenting your journey in everything you're doing along the way? Um, well, I mean, I'm I'm currently like I produce a bunch of social media content, and I have the podcast where I'm talking about stuff like. That's an easy way for me to document my journey. I go back, I watch the first episode of the podcast, and I'm like, "Wow, I could just, I could just." But yeah, I mean, I, I, I should probably start a journal where I just like journal in some bit whenever a big event happens, just th throw in a couple words about it, and it doesn't have to be One that of the great. Things that um, what we're saying, you know, it, it, there's there's doing the thing and making money from the business itself. And then there's the next level up, which is, which is teaching people how to do what you just did, right? And that next level up is where you can really scale and make a ton of money 
and you know because it's information what you're doing is coaching teaching and training and giving people information you're saying look i created this consulting company you can create a consulting company too let me show you the fastest easiest cheapest way to do this to where you're going to be profitable day one yeah you know like yeah. people will pay good money to learn all of the mistakes that you made and how you overcame. Yeah, and so so the interesting thing is that a lot of the lessons and things I'm applying to this are things that I'm taking directly from what my mentor does and how he built out his thing is he did he did exactly that where he started his a business and he's learned a lot along the way through a bunch of different business ventures. He was in real estate when the market crashed and all these crazy things and now I am taking he's he's been pouring into me and i'm like okay well well okay because his goal is now he's helping businesses become profitable through content and leveraging the digital age which i think that's the one thing a lot of businesses are struggling to get into is this whole digital side of the world and so so i'm 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 kind of i'm kind of like taking it see it's interesting i can i'm kind of doing a sort of leapfrog maneuver where I'm taking the information and the the data that he has on that he's learned over years of work and then I'm taking that in from working with him and then now now I have a business that does the similar thing but then it's like okay now in 10 20 years I could be like okay well here's how you do what I did here's how you take information leapfrog and launch a business that is going to be elite good yeah I think that's, that's helpful, you know, and again, it's just, it's, it's taking what you're passionate about and teaching other people. Exactly. You know? Yeah. That's, that's, that's entirely what it's all about. Um, I don't, I, I think that one, one place a lot of people can go wrong in business is they're too focused on making money. I don't think money should ever be the focus of a business. The business should be providing value to people. Because when you yeah, provide just value, an exchange of value, right? Yeah. When you when you when your number one focus is how can I help my client um, be like in what the best way possible, you're going to be a heck of a lot more successful, and you're going to be a heck of a lot more driven to get out of bed every morning. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, you know on Friday, <laughs> last Friday I was in Tim's office with Giancarlo Bedoni, and we had just finished our noon workout and it was veterans jujitsu and there were tons of people there. And, you know, um, it, it's just really cool to be around those guys. They're just all elite. Everybody there is just elite. And I was in Tim's office kind of mapping out this structure for Giancarlo. We're going to be setting up his foundation and stuff. Um, and Tim looks over at me and, and I was like, you know, before I started, I was like, Hey, do you mind if we use your office? Do you mind if we go in there? He's like, yeah, I got a podcast in like 30 minutes. Um, and he, he had a buddy of his there that was his master sergeant, um, or a sergeant major at, in, uh, the green berets, um, when, when he was training. And so he introduced us, his name's Steven and he introduced me and John Carlo. And he was like, this is John Carlo Bedoni. He's like world champion. He's the best 88 kilogram you know jujitsu guy yeah. in the whole world this is him like he's it this is it and so he shakes his hand and he goes and this is my good friend sean <laughs> and i just shook his hand and met him but it's like being around those guys yeah having that opportunity i was just like blown away that i was sitting in the room with those guys hanging out bodani's um, awesome i got to talk to him on apogee what's that i i was just saying bodani is freaking awesome Love that, love yeah, that guy. Got to talk to him on Apogee. Legit dude. Yeah, he's he's an amazing guy and just a really, really cool, cool person. You know, he's amazing athlete, but he's just an even better human being. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, just his his career is just starting to take off. Like he's just starting to get really, really good, and he's already world champion. That's how crazy good he is. Yeah. And. You know, he's he's wanting to do it the right way. He's wanting to set it up the right way from the jump and make sure that he's helping other people along the way. And so it was cool. You know, I was talking to Tim's um, master sergeant and uh, he was he was telling me that he works for a nonprofit as well. And we were talking about the network of, of nonprofits that we're putting together and and 
all of all of these conversations that I'm having with these elite level people never would have been possible if I had, you know, two years ago ran up to Tim and said, hey, man, um, you know, I wrote a book and I want to sell you some stuff. Right. Yeah, it would have been it would have been a totally different situation. Instead, what I went to him and said was, I want to help you build this out. And I've been pouring into him for two years. Yeah. You know? And so it's just when you when you when you show up and serve other people, that's when the opportunities happen. It's not the other way around. You don't hunt for opportunities. You show up and serve. Absolutely. And the byproduct of that service is you get to you get to hang out with some really cool people and have some yeah. amazing opportunities. You know? Yeah. It's that simple. It's it's providing that value and helping people in every way you can. Um, and here's the interesting thing. You might not see the products of that immediately. You might help someone once, and it might be 10 years later that they come to you and provide yeah. value back to you. But providing that value, they wouldn't be coming to you if they hadn't provided that value initially. So pour into everyone you possibly can because you never know who's going to be the next Elon Musk or you never know if they're going to want to help you with something you never know so just pour in pour in pour in it's that simple yep yep he's got a friend named chad show and um chad had a great saying i'm gonna butcher it here probably but he had a great quote he said you know uh doing good Nobody ever required or, or, or a good deed. If you do a good deed, it doesn't require uh, recognition. Exactly. A good deed, doing good doesn't require any recognition. It's just good in and of itself, you know? And so it's, it's a, a principle that you got to kind of focus everything on. It's like if, you're, if your intention is to get something back from somebody by serving, it's, it's not the same. If your intention is just to do the good thing, you know, that's when the magic happens. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's, it, it is incredibly simple. And I think that I, it would be interesting if the whole world took that approach. Ima imagine the world we'd be living in if everyone took the pr approach of providing value. There would be an, it would be an incredibly different world. Um, there would be a, it would, it would just be so vastly different. Or just leading with that, you know, leading with service, leading with serving others first instead of focusing on the the business deal. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I think that, right. yeah, it's, it's interesting to just look at, because from this, that's just looking at, looking at the world from the perspective of providing value, it can change the fun, like your fundamental view of the world, if you shift from, from how can I make money to how can I provide value to the world, and everything seems so much more attainable. Because instead of, can I make a million dollars, it's, let's just provide value to people. Let, let's, like, it's instead of, can I provide, how can I make a million dollars, it's, can I provide a, a value to a million people? Because you then you're looking at it, Oh, I'm going to provide value to a million people. Guess what? All I need is a dollar from each. <laughs> like you look at it that way and now it's that simple. It just yeah. is. Man. Could be. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 15. So I don't, I don't have that much experience in the marketplace, but. You're doing amazing for 15. Thank you, I sir. Mean, you're crushing it. Thanks, man. What? Uh, so what's next for you? What's the next thing on your target list? On Any my big targets you have set for yourself. I'm just I'm trying to grow the the uh, the social media following across the podcast channels to podcast podcast channels, Instagram, all those places to um, 10, 10k collectively. Just trying to get out there to more people. That that's that's one of the. What's significant about ten thousand followers? What's the? It's ar it's arbitrary. It was just okay. it was it was a number I picked that that looked like a that's a big goal, but it seemed attainable within a year. But and I also know that ten k is 
where you can really start to see the um, what where where, where the growth ROI. becomes well yeah and and at that point the it becomes exponential because once you have 10k algorithms start to favor you and yes you do start to get ROI in some regard um, for me the focus with the podcast though the ROI is the relationships I get to build with these amazing with amazing people. So the the ROI isn't really anything about the money at this point. It's about, hey, I get to sh- talk to Sean Briscombe for an hour and provide value and then build that relationship. And so that in, in, in the future, if I need help with, hey, how do I set up this tax system? I can, I, I, you're, you have that person in your network. So that, yep. that is the, the goal currently. Um, I want to build that out. And then I have some other things that I am just – looking to work on i have um local youth center i'm working on a podcast for neo shout out if anyone from there's listening to this episode but um working with them to launch a podcast so being lead on that project is just i'm trying to get that project launched in the next month or two it's been six months of working on it and it's just been a lot of going on there because they have an expansion they're working on and stuff so it's just taken a lot of time but I'm excited in that regard, and I've I've got some bunch of What's things. What's the win there with them? Are you when going to be signing a contract or the win there? I'm doing that fully for free. Um, I've been yeah. I've been going there for I've been attending a youth center for two years now, and again, it's another thing where I can just provide value to them and um, help them build out their online their online um, presence because they have no no real online presence at this point and i've learned easily that uh, having some sort of online presence and an engaged online audience is so important um just to help them grow that and um yeah it's more of just a hey let's do this because i know that it would be good for your bit for your brand and your business and it's it's something i enjoy i enjoy doing the podcast side of things um, but I also am looking at it as an opportunity where I can find someone who's also passionate about it at some point. It'll probably be me doing most of the stuff on the project at first, but Hey, maybe then someday someone else comes in and I get to teach them all about how to do this. And, and, and so then they can go out and help the world. But it's like, I don't know. I just see a, an area in the marketplace for podcasts because podcasts are so powerful because you get this hour and from this hour you have 20 freaking clips you can send out and it's it's just one of those things where I'm not I'm not looking to get paid for it um, at the current moment if I were to do it for a business as opposed to an, uh, a nonprofit that I've been working with for years it might be different but but right now it's just get that out there and uh it's also a good opportunity to work with a team and be the leader of a team because um, I've got a man, all the stuff podcast, put together budget, budgeting stuff. And and then at some point, I'll probably also be in charge of, of lining up guests for their podcast. So it's just taking on more and challenging that's, myself. So <clears throat> that's, that's the goal. That's education. Exactly. You know, you're learning like exponentially fast by doing this stuff. That's That's the goal. Um, so that then when I, when I'm getting paid to launch a podcast, the mistakes don't cost me money because I've already made them because in a situation like this, if I make a mistake, since I, I'm not, I'm not getting paid for it. This is fully just me being of help how I can. Then, then when the time comes that I'm getting paid, I, I, I remember a quote, I don't remember who made it, but it, but I think, you know, it was Andy Frazella when he was on the Apogee call, it was. Um, I've, I made mistakes that cost me six figures, but, but now those same mistakes would cost me seven figures. No, so I've made mistakes that cost me six figures, but learning from those mistakes made me seven. And so it's like making these mistakes when the capital to lose is zero. So then in the future, when it's X amount of dollars, I've already made the mistake and I've already learned from it. Yeah. You got to pay the piper. Pipe, piper's always going to get paid. Right, you either pay now with your sweat and work, or you pay later with lost income and lost money. Yeah, that's that's entirely it. It's just learning. I mean, 
because my educational experience is so much of that project based things a lot of that's mo all the projects i'm taking on right now are all free i'm not i'm not charging anyone anything but it's it's for the education and for the fact that it will it will most definitely come back to help me in the future when i can be like oh hey yeah i I ha and it'll also help me when I have a client asking if I have experience in this. Oh, I did this for this person and built it out to X, Y, Z. Yeah. And so it's just learning from that and then um, and then doing that. And then I think the thing I'm most excited about right now, though, is helping my mom launch her, her um, couple of businesses she's doing because um since i'm really helping her dive into that and create systems for all of that and help her scale it so she just put out some of her some of the first instagram posts from the account um last night and this morning and so we're working on getting a social media built out and she's getting she's already getting some leads for her business and so it's exciting to help build that out because i get to see the direct impact of it in my daily life yeah yeah, you'll get to see her growth. That's what. That's awesome. Yeah, it's exciting. Well, good luck to her. Tell her I said good luck. All right. Wish her well. Um, I think she listens to the episode. So, mom, if you made it this far, Sean says good luck. Um, yeah. Also, you should That's um, exciting. uh, if if you're like, because you listen to these in the car, maybe you're on your way to the grocery store. Could you pick me up a Hershey's? Thanks. Love you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming on here, man. Yeah, you bet. My pleasure. Yeah. Hope I was, uh, it was useful. Oh, it was great. It, it was one of my favorite conversations I've had recently on the podcast because, um, some, some of the episodes can feel a little interviewee, you know, this one felt a lot yeah. more like a free flowing conversation, which is always nice. And What's yeah, the conversation station station, man. Yeah. Thank you. you Got to make it conversational. Yeah. I may. Maybe I should just come up with like a stupid one-liner to start opening up with the, each guest. I think the best thing to do is is just not have any agenda and open up and be like, so what are we talking about today? Like you did with me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, maybe I'll do that from now on because usually I have some sort of an agenda. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple of key points. Yeah, I have I have a, someone coming out in March who just asked me for an outline. Maybe I'll and I told him I'd send him one later this week. I'll, maybe I should just write on a piece of paper whatever you want to cover, and then just send it over. <laughs> no, I I, yeah. I I know him. He's he's a good friend of my dad's, so it wouldn't be like it would just be it would be funny. But um, or you could send a whole agenda back to him and then open it up with. So what do you want to talk about today? Yeah, because I mean I could send him something of some things I want to cover just so that he's got that in the back of his mind. But then I could just be like, "Hey, what do you want to talk about?" Um, yeah, what, what's 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 uh, what's up with you? Um, but yeah, thanks for coming on here. Uh, I I, ca I don't pleasure. I can't appreciate uh, express enough how appreciative I am of this. Um, yeah, you're doing great, man. Keep it up. Keep going. Thank you, sir. I know it's tiring sometimes, and it's you know stressful. It's like chopping wood. Oh, yeah, it's not exciting a lot of days. Oh yeah, but keep grinding but keep uh, but when you get comments of people talking about um in them enjoying your message that makes it all worth it it's absolutely that's the, that's the best part is being able to impact people's lives we all are watching you know we may not be commenting all the time on instagram but we're all watching you so keep going thank you sir you're doing great yeah thank you so much thank you guys at home for watching I'm Parker Imerell. I've been talking to the one and only Mr. Sean Briscombe, and this has been The Conversation Station.